Hello. Think about the forward gain transfer function represented as 12 over s plus 2 times s plus 3 integrated to a system featuring a unity gain feedback path. The transfer function for the closed loop system can be written as gs over 1 plus gs and can be further simplified as follows. When we use a step input as our reference signal the output yt will have the shape of this form to achieve better control of the output we can introduce a controller to the system let's consider adding a controller for our system represented as s plus 2 over s plus 10 now the closed loop transfer function for our system is gscs over 1 plus gscs and can be further simplified as follows When a step input is introduced to our new system, the output yt will take the form as follows. The system now has no overshoot indicating improved performance. But implementing a physical controller using analog components is quite hard. To overcome this problem, we usually implement the controller inside the computer. Now we face a new challenge since we are working with both analog and digital domain we need converters within the system to convert signals between them to convert analog signals to digital signals we use analog to digital converters when a signal is fed into the adc it samples the signal at regular intervals providing a digital signal the input signal is represented as yt the sampled signal can be expressed as y0 y1 y2 y3 and so on generally we denote this series as ykt where t is the sampling interval to convert digital signals to analog signals we use digital to analog converters often incorporating with zero order hold techniques when a digital signal is fed into the converter it produces an analog signal by simply holding the value of each sample this can be mathematically expressed as follows returning back to our system representation We need a digital to analog converter to convert the digital signal coming out of the computer into analog form and a analog to digital converter to convert signals back into digital form. For now, let's keep aside what's happening inside the digital computer and focus on what's happening outside it. Let's say the signal given out by the digital computer is UDT. and the signal coming into the digital computer is ydt both of which are digital signals rearrange in the new system since the input and output of the system are discrete signals we can model the system using a discrete transfer function denoted as gz gz represents the relationship between input and output signals in z domain for those who are unfamiliar with z transform consider a discrete signal xn the z transform of xn can be written as x of z equals to the sum from negative infinity to positive infinity of x of n times z to the power negative n going back to discrete domain transfer function gz gz can be written as is a transform of ydt divided by is a transform of udt if udt is an impulse function is a transform of udt ud is it becomes one thus gz will be equal to the is a transform of the impulse response in order to find gz we set an impulse function for udt it will be fed into the digital to analog converter resulting the curve corresponding to u step t minus u step t minus capital t where u step is the step function 
when this signal is fed into our analog plant GS and if the step response of GS is Y step T according to properties of linear time invariant systems the output of GS would be Y step T minus Y step T minus capital T. When this signal is fed into analog to digital converter the ADC will sample the signal at regular intervals and give a discrete output as y step kt minus y step kt minus t. This is the output of our system where y step t is the step response of our analog system GS. We can find y step t by taking Laplace inverse of GS times u step s where u step s is the Laplace transform of u step t and it is 1 over s. To find y step kt, we can take Laplace inverse of gs divided by s at t equals k capital T. Now we can find gz which is the z transform of the impulse response. Applying the property of time delay, gz can be represented as follows. For our analog system GS, if we apply the formula, we can establish a relationship for GZ as follows. If we choose a sampling period of 0.1 seconds and plot the impulse response of GS and GZ, we would obtain a graph as shown. Now we can unify the representations of DAC, GS and ADC into single GZ and this serves as the analogous discrete system for the analog plant allowing us to model and analyze the entire system in discrete domain. Integrating GDZ into our complete system with digital computer, let's address what's happening inside the digital computer. Since digital computers process digital signals, the reference signal RT must now be discrete and accordingly the controller should be in Z domain. Now the question is how to transform CS into CDZ. Transforming the analog controller into digital domain is quite straightforward. We mainly focus on three methods to perform this task. Let's start with forward Euler method where we replace every S in CS with Z-1 divided by capital T where capital T is the sampling interval. The next method, backward Euler method, involves substituting S with Z-1 divided by Tz. And then the Tustin's method or bilinear transformation method involves substituting S with 2 times z minus 1 divided by t times z plus 1. For this example, let's proceed with Tustin's method. We can obtain cd z by substituting 2 over capital T z minus 1 over z plus 1 for s in cs. By solving the relationships obtained above for a sampling period of 0.1 seconds, we can derive the complete discrete domain control system as follows. Now the transfer function of the discrete time control system is CDZ times GDZ divided by 1 plus CDZ times GDZ and can be further simplified as follows. And now if we set the discrete step function as our RDT reference signal, the output YDT will have this form. The red line represents the step response of the corresponding analog domain system. And that's all for the first part.